Welcome back. And you mentioned something very profound on the break, uh, Tim. And it's open lines to 800-259-5791. You mentioned all wars are banker wars. And I want to say this and qualify it so people don't take the wrong word. The other day, we had Tex Mars on the program. And Tex made the very profound statement that most of the white Jews in Israel only have 2% of genes from Abraham and Isaac and basically the ancient Hebrews. <clears throat> 87%, by the way, of the Palestinians do have Hebrew genes, but they follow the satanic religion of Islam. And I said the statement that we've had the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America, what they need to do is we need to have a massive revival in both the Palestinians and the Jews that are Sabbateans by and large, or communists, or secular agnostics, or followers of Shabtai, C. and Jacob Frank, which is very Chamish, who was a Jew and actually worked and fought in the IDF in the early 80s. We need a revival, not just as, as Avi Lipkin says, a Christian revival for Jewish survival. We need a Messianic revival so God will spare the nation of Israel. That's a false setting up of the nation as a fig tree without fruit. But God's going to put fruit back on them. He's going to deal with them, whether they're genetically uh, followed, you know, from Abraham. He's going to give the genetics spiritually of a covenant. And you know, when they talk about the chosen people, and I'm going to repeat this so people get it right, God does a calling for all of us in earth, whether you're Mongolian or Chinese or white or if you're descended from the Cohen lines of I am, nobody is superior. You know, there's endless geology, uh, genealogies that they, they rail again in the Bible that says, do not do them. What is important is your spiritual DNA. Do you have the blood of Jesus in you, in your spiritual uh, body? Are you a do Shema, do you hear and do God's will? And he's called you, and when you do, you are the one that does the choosing. The chosen people are chosen by us, not God. And, we do the when choosing. when you look at near-death experiences when people die, uh, those that have had really bad, scary near-death experiences, frequently they get to, the, in a sense, the gates of heaven. They get near, they can't, they can't stand it. The, the holy vibrational frequencies, if you want to call it that, the, the, the feeling that uh, the, of holiness, of God, of peace, of right. love, is something which they can't handle. They can't right. stand it. But if yeah. you have God in your heart, you see, right. and so then this, you go there, you, you say, I'm home. This so so this shouldn't be, by the way, an insult. This should not be an insult uh, to uh, people that are Khazarian because they're living in the nation God of Israel. Loves and, God and, loves and, all. Right, and, and it should also be a time to repent because if they want to be in the land, the land is not for the Palestinians because they are genetic Hebrews, uh, because they're not following the covenant with God, or for the Khazarians who are now living in the land that think they have a genetic right to the land. It's been proven now that's not true. The only thing that gives you a right to the land, because it's a conditional covenant, is a covenant with the Most High God, which is conditional which means you and I, Tim, have more right to the land than a secular agnostic Jew living in Israel or a Palestinian living in Palestine. You and I have the right to that covenant with that land, not now, them. Well, God, God looks at us. He looks at us in totality. He looks right. at their soul. He sees everything, including what we hide even from ourselves. Now, I, I wanted, with, with that provision, I want to get into the banks because all of the wars for the past number of centuries have been banker wars. All of them. Yeah. Exactly. Even the war between Wellington and, and, and Napoleon. Well, is you, the manipulation you can make the argument that the Napoleonic Wars were the first global wars. Right, and all these global wars, by the way, are all manipulated by Sabbatean, and I'm not going to use the word Jew, because the word Jew is, is praiser. Sabbatean Satanist is Jesus. If he was back here, he would use the terms that I'm going to use right now, which is the synagogue of Satan, the vipers. These vipers are Satanists. They follow the Zohar, the Sephiot Zira, the, uh, all these nasty books of the Kabbalah. They teach that Jesus is living in, 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 in a Hades, well, burning and boiling an excrement for oh, eternity. Well, now they're, they're absolutely full of it. Look, who are the people right. who have destroyed America? 
the greatest, most productive uh, real estate on, on the face of the earth? Who are the people that have driven us into a depression and, and ruined our morality and now taking us into yet a third world war? The Sabbatean yeah. Satanists. I'm not going to call well, yeah, them Jews because exactly. the word Jew it's means... The global is it a, cartel. Yeah, they, I mean, they're, they're not Jews. Demonic. The word praiser, there are real Jews that are Torah Jews that have the genetics as well. But there are also Jews that are Torah Jews that are, that are Khazarians. There are Jews that are Falasha Jews from Ethiopia and South Africa that are black as coal. And they're, they're Jews. They actually have Jewish Hebrew blood as well. They're in the covenant. We also know that the, the many of the so-called Christians in, uh, in Ethiopia and in Egypt... Uh, basically, they have Jewish Hebrew blood in them, and they are Christians that follow Yeshua HaMashiach, just like the new converts, no matter what their nationality. They can be Mongolian or Russian or whatever, it doesn't matter. They now are have the, the Hebrew DNA. But here's what's happening. They're going to build a temple. The global bankers are want to destroy. They're basically the interface between the powers that control mankind. You, you hear the comments by Mr. Putin and the foreign minister that they're not going to, quote, get into a big war with America. This is now after three times of very advanced weapons used by Israel against Syria trying to provoke a war. <clears throat> now, for Israel's sake, we do not want to transfer a power to the El Nurse Al-Qaeda, which are highly organized, and we're funding them. There have been noted last year that they are a terrorist organization by our own State Department, yet we're giving them millions of dollars in advanced weapons through proxies to Qatar and other countries. This is insane, and because what happens is if there is a preemptive well, who, who strike coming, Israel will brother, attack. But the CIA. <laughs> right, well, what's going to happen is they're, yeah, but they're not in total control, and the problem is you got wacky no, no, people. No, of course not. Yeah, and you've you got wacky people not. who are going to have a bad day, and they can go crazy, just like the Syrians could just get up someday and say, hey, the American ships are within range, we're just going to fire on them, and... You know, the Russians can say they've washed their hands like Pontius Pilate. I'm sorry, we, we, we sold them the weapons, but we didn't approve of this. And we told America it was a good idea. So when two or three ships, American ships, go to the bottom and thousands of sailors die, they'll have lots of excuses well, and they handle a hand you know, ring. When, uh, before the United States supplied the Pac-3 uh, Patriot missile system to Turkey, uh, Russia... Uh, spoke to Turkey, and they said, you know, and, and the United States, and they said, this is an escalation. It's a bad right. idea. Please don't go there. Right. Well, we went there anywhere. Anyway, right. well, you know, it's profits for the military-industrial complex, and Israel won, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what did Russia do? They said, fine. By the way, uh, Syria, we're going to extend you some credit, and with that credit, we're going to sell you the Icelander missile, which is Mach Seven, maybe Mach 8, and can take out the Patriot 3 systems, as well right. as U.S. Air Force bases in Turkey and Royal Air Force bases in Cyprus, etc., etc. And there's no stopping a Mach 7 or Mach 8 uh, missile. Now, exactly, yeah. So, Tim, you're the military expert. Where is this going? Well, there are a number of possibilities. Uh, today, it, it appears that uh, some elements in the administration are trying to spin this as this will just be a limited strike. Well, that's what they said about the U.S. attacks on Libya. It was going to be a, lib uh, a limited strike. Mm -hmm. And then Gaddafi ended up being, um, well, I can't say it on the air, but being... Well, uh, he, uh, he was skewered by you know. a steel pole after being raped, and then he was abused and put to death. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can't say that. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, now, okay. here's the point. What they're really saying, it's a limited strike because we don't know how Russia will respond or we don't have full intelligence on the weapon systems and whether they'll use them, including fuel air bombs, the most advanced chemical weapon systems on the planet, and the Russian biopreparat weapons, well, the poor man's uh, nuke. Let, let, and, let and, and I think that they're misjudging the Syrians and the Iranians and Hezbollah. I think they're crazy. And I think this is where America is going to get its butt whooped. This is not the same thing as Libya, Iraq, or Afghanistan. The toughest well, people on earth, and I've said this before, are Syrians and ago, Russians. Israel thought it was going to go into southern Lebanon and whip uh, Hezbollah, and it was Israel that got whipped. Yeah, I'm going to predict that what will happen out of this is going to be a sufficient whooping and a sufficient amount of blood on both sides that they'll come to the peace table and the peace treaty will come out of it. But it's going to get ugly, really ugly. A lot of innocent people, 
lot of our Navy. But it wasn't because I didn't know enough. How to defend a castle with chemical or explosive weapons. Welcome back, and uh, Tim, I um, want to just TV for a second. Uh, about uh, three or four weeks ago, we did a, a test with you. Actually, in prayer, you're the first individual I was told in prayer to actually do this test. It's the quantum resonance test. I had a question to the lady today who wanted a second opinion. Well, I don't do second opinions, to be honest with you. I do consults for people to transfer their care so I can get them started. So if people want to do a second opinion, I'm not your guy because I take over the care. I expect you not to get nutraceuticals from other sources, including your natural pass or other companies on this network or elsewhere, because how can I tell you if it's going to work if you're taking garbage from other places or you think your so-called expert knows more? Well, the first thing is uh, <clears throat> God gave me a gift 32 years ago, supernaturally, of a gift, and I guess the Christian word would be a gift of medical knowledge. And that's pretty profound, by the way. I've been able to use this gift hundreds of thousands of times, not just dozens. And recently, just to focus that, it doesn't change it, uh, he allowed me to act as a proxy by holding the electrode for the quantum resonance test for people thousands of miles away. And Tim, you're the first individual that did the test on. I've done that test now on perhaps a dozen people since, and their results have been smack on. And the way the procedure I do is I pray with them first if they're not a believer. And I'll just give an example. Uh, Last week I had a gentleman who is a physician Actually, he's also a member of our Academy of Environmental Medicine. He got very sick, and he's also Jewish, but he's raised Jewish, but kind of just believes in God. And I had to witness to him, and I said, well, I got this gift because uh, I got it from Yeshua HaMashiach, otherwise known as Jesus, and my gift was given to me so that I could witness to people like you who were raised Jewish so you'd accept Messiah. And I said, I want you to understand, when I do this, I don't want to know your history. I'm just going to do the test first. I'm going to pray with you, and so I gave him the ironic prayer. And then, because he was bar mitzvah, I gave him the ironic prayer, and then I did the test, and afterward we spent about two hours matching it up exactly with what's going on in his history. And again, he's an expert. He's a specialist that actually does tests on other people. And he's so sick he's not in practice now, and he wants to get well enough to be back in practice. So, Tim, tell us about what happened with your test. Well, I, you made a believer out of me because... Um uh, when you you started to do the read, I, I think the only thing that surprised me was uh, I was a little bit uh, uh, iron uh, poor, but uh, the rest of the stuff was pretty. It's much also right the state on. of iron. The state of iron. We can have iron in the wrong places, like our artery walls. You know, increasing the chances of fentanyl reactions that can cause unstable plaque, etc. So it's also the state of iron, yeah. But everything matched up perfectly, didn't it? Yeah, and, it, you know, it really did. Because as you're going through, I'm I'm listening and I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's that's you know what I expect. That's within. No, no. Uh, what, what it does yeah. is it demonstrates a physical proof because the report does it in a minute, okay? And I can't fiddle it; it just does it. Physical proof that. There's a lot more to the universe than what people assume. Now, what I'm showing here is that this is a presentation of something that is a, you know, a, a miraculous activity that's, that's demonstrating the other things that we talk about on this program compared to any other show on this network or any other network. We are attempting, and again, we're fallible as human beings. But we try to do the very best thing we can with the best intentions of the Most High God to quote the Bible correctly, to interpret it correctly, to not put harmful ideas in people's minds, and to also heal them. <clears throat> and I, I do a lot of this stuff on my own time. So when I charge 150 for a consult, it barely covers it because I actually spend hours talking to them afterward, and then I have to spend more time generating report with more prayer and reviewing records. I mean, I just had a gentleman last week up in, here uh, in San Clemente that sent me like... <laughs> You know, I think it was six or seven medical records and tests and everything. And when I finished it all, I synthesized together a program. So part of our program we're doing for our big sale now, and we have it on already, is a quantum resonance analyzer machine. You can get it, and the test result interpretations are included with the machine. Now, if I get flooded with a hundred tests, obviously there's going to be a problem because I'll get swamped. But I'm going to try to do the best I can. And um, if you don't have a machine and you want to get a test done, I only do it for, quote, believers of those who are going to accept a ministry, because this is a ministry. 
And when they accept that, they know that this is not coming because I'm just smart Dr. Deagle or I'm going to fiddle the results or I really do own you know, their history even though I haven't talked to them before. No, this is supernatural and they have to understand that. So when we talk about Israel, we talk about biblical issues, we talk about geopolitical, we're synthesizing together like Watchmen in the Tower. The, the, the biblical truths in the Bible, we're, we're synthesizing together spiritual intuitive knowledge God's given both of us and many other believers out there that know they can hear the ring of truth. They know intellectually if they're wise, as it says in the Bible, be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. If they know that God it counts every hair in their head and also their nation, we need to pray for America. America is not acting in the best interests of the American people, the Palestinian people, the Jewish people, the people of the Middle East. America is acting like a beast. And I saw a beast great and divergent from all the rest who break nations into pieces. That's America. We're the only superpower remaining on the earth. Well, the other I, uh, as a historian, and let's get back to the, the quantum yeah. stuff in just a second. Yeah. As a historian, I have to say that in the 19th century, in the 1800s, uh, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, was used as the principal tool by the global banking cartel, which is headed right. by the Rothschild family, and there's quite a number of others, uh, Warburg, Schiffs, Goldman Sachs, the uh, Rothschild, or uh, Rockefellers. And, of course, they put the cover on being Jews because Messiah they're came out of the Jewish uh, bloodline. The, 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 they're, 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 they're not, not Jews. They're, and, they're synagogue of Satan. we got to call them what they are. Jesus confronted the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and told them what they were. He didn't mince words. He wasn't trying to become a late night TV host and, and get and win, you know, win friends and influence people. He was telling it straight up what they were. Well, he is the truth. You see, right? He That's why he says you you have to be the truth. But we have to, if you want to watch dance like Fred Astaire, Jesus, Yeshua Hamashiach, you have to be like him, which means you have to stand for the truth. He says because you love not the truth. He said, I'm telling you this now to everybody out there listening. Near other shows, other TV programs, I read a garbage newspaper today that continues to beat this drum that the Syrian government will kill its own citizens for no good reason to promote the enemies, not only of the state of Israel, but of the state of Syria, and create a sectarian war that will shut down the Strait of Hormuz Look, and destroy the, the, the world economy. The, 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 the evil people promoting that uh, are, are seeking war. They're seeking a general Middle East war. They're seeking uh, the Third World War. Right. And why would you seek the Third World War with 21st century weapons of mass destruction? Well, I would say to you that, that, that as a human being, it's insane. In other words, right. if, you, if you are a human being living on this planet, and knowing what I know about 21st century weapons of mass destruction, it don't make any sense. And I yeah, even, even if you're somewhat of a socio-psychopath, there's a level of a red line even for a psychopath. Maybe they won't kill well, their mother. Otherwise Maybe they don't, want to see, they don't want to see the death of their great whales or omnicide of all the plants on the earth. There's a red line for everyone, even someone who's crazy as, you know, well, you know Helter Skelter. I, that's why I believe that uh, uh, our, our great commander-in-chief drug his heels for a long time on this. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can give him kudos for one thing. So far, he's drug his heels, and, I'm, you know, now he's saying it's going to be a surgical strike. That's like taking a stick into a hornet's nest and just rattling it around. Yeah, All it does is inflame the situation. Very unwise. If he does anything, it's going to inflame the situation dramatically, and they have no idea where it'll go. That's right. Those things we're saying on the program are the truth. Tim, before we get back into geopolitics, I want to get back to your testing. Um, in the last uh, few months, I'd say, since we did your test, I've done literally almost a test every day now. It's lately. And I've done everything from a little girl with von Recklinghauser's neurofibromatosis to a blind man in Utah to a gentleman which has serious concerns about his uh, pancreas and liver uh, in the East Coast. Uh, to a gentleman that has uh, otherwise a pretty athletic but significant osteoporosis, osteopenia, and some cardiac valvular problems. All of them showed up in their testing, some specific abnormalities we need to do to correct those issues. Uh, and it's miraculous. I mean, there is no other word for it. Uh, and people say, well, how can you do this? Well, I know people say it's voodoo. It's not. 
Now say it's, you know, the work of the, the devil. The reason, I like, uh, the reason I like quantum physics, or if you prefer quantum mechanics, right. it's where science and theology meet. Right, well, we're seeing an evidence of that today. And you see, it says in Daniel, many will run to and fro, and knowledge will greatly increase. We're going to see the evidence, because of the great deal of what Jesus taught, especially in the early church, was the ascension of mankind. And there's two aspects to what I call, the, the, a lot of people misinterpret the rapture. The first is the, uh, the parable of the, of the tares that are going to be plucked up and burnt in the fire before the harvest. So it means they're going to be bound together by their own actions and their own evil intent. And the, the, the globalists that are doing this stuff, they're going to be bound together, live in underground cities, if they're going to do different things together. Their economic system or their nanobot in vaccines or whatever they're going to do is going to cause their own demise. On the other hand, God's saying, you know, come up here. In other words, ascend mankind and realize you're not just an I, you're a we. When I do a, if you want to call pray for somebody, even when I'm long before I had this machine years ago, I'd often have, you know, physically feel their sickness in my body. And when I did this test on a gentleman just last week, I felt like I got a high kick up your abdomen with severe pain through my back and a feeling of nausea and blood in my mouth and a sensation of doom. Uh, and I knew what it meant. And I meant to, you know, and I said, well, this is not good. I mean, this is very similar to what uh, happened when I talked to Bob Chapman. Well, people need to understand that, uh, you know, these are not there to go cure you because you're not going to be cured. Eventually you're going to die or, you know, maybe many years hence because you're going to you have your illness cured. But the real issue is it's a sign to tell you whatever else is being told, you need to go back to your Bible after you use your brain and your intellect because they tell people to use better questions. And then you need to say, you know, I'm hearing this message over here. Like I had a gentleman this morning I talked to. He said, I'm so confused because I'm listening to this one, I'm listening to that one. I remember the, he's quoting this prophecy message from someone in the prophecy club back some years ago and i'm saying you know you, the bible is like a giant equation and it says in second peter 2 10 it's not for private interpretation but you have to have literally the help of the of the omniscience of the most high god to put together like a locksmith all the lock and keys of every scripture because you can't throw one over your shoulder and say i don't like that scripture <laughs> one third of the bible yeah, it's a, one third of the Bible interprets itself, and also you have to understand the culture. So, for an example, it says, "Well, no man knows the day or the hour." That actually was Hebrew uh, eschatological writing to tell you an apocalyptic writing, not only the day or the hour, but even the moment. If you were a watchman watching for the signs, you weren't even just going to know the day or the hour. You're going to actually know the moment to blow the shofar. So. But he wasn't going to give you a date. He was going to give you the signs to watch. So when you saw these line up like the tumblers of a lock, those tumblers are lined up. We're there. We see them building the temple. We see them pushing a war in the Middle East. We see the global economy ready to blow up. We see global plagues. We see Fukushima ready to have building four fall over and poison the northern hemisphere. We see so many evil things going on. And even now the plan next month to activate this uh, literally cybernetic, I, I call it, uh, Radionic center. Let's call it that. Let's call it a radionic uh, mind control center in Utah. And there's 147 more like this, where they create a sim of you in this cybernetic world, so they can literally control reality. You got to deal well, real, you realize out there, we're dealing with evil that's so galactic and so advanced and so damn malevolent. But remember. He who is within us is greater than he in the world. If God can say, I'm going to have a doctor 3,000 miles away from an individual I did a test yesterday, and give me an insight to help that person overcome a major illness. And sometimes, by the way, when I pray, people have had spontaneous healing. Other times it's in steps. But it's not so much to heal them. you know, It's to witness to them that God cares for them. Because when God cares for you, you deposit that love back, and he gives you faith to get through the next crisis, the next disaster. And as you deposit it back, you build a relationship with the Creator God, and that's what gets you through the fire of what's coming. And, and, you know, some people have never had uh, what some people call psychic experience or, or preternatural experiences. And well, they ignore I them, too. A lot of people ignore, they ignore them. Most people ignore them. I talk to doctors all the time, when, and I get straightened up with them and, and, and friendly. You wouldn't believe how many doctors and nurses will tell you straight up who work in ICU, surgery, intensive care, uh, virtually all of them. And, and 20% are hyperintuitive, where it means they're like, if you want to call it levels of gifting, that's like the high priest in the old temple where they you know they go to the high priest and he would discern what was wrong with you. And again, he was using not only 
medical knowledge of different type of fungi and illnesses and bad molds in your home and so on. He was using intuitive gifts that God gave him. The ancient yeah. Kohenic priesthood. Yeah, it, it, uh, I, you know, I, I could tell you countless examples in my life of, of things that uh, it, I guess scientifically wouldn't make sense, but they actually do in, in quantum physics. That's when you... Well, we uh, have science now. ...begins yeah. to tie everything together. Right. Uh, and in one of the theories of quantum physics, the super holographic universe model, and I don't have right. time to go into it, but... But one of the things that it, it's, it, like the, it's, it's like the holodeck of the of the Star Trek Enterprise. Yeah, but the, beyond that, yeah, but yeah, it, it, it's not timely uh, fixed or linked so much. All time, it, it's it's eternal, it, and right. and, it, and, and the, the way it was described it was all that was is, all that is is, and all that will be is. And I've had over two years of graduate uh, theology, and I and I'm I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, man, that is the best theological definition of eternity, uh, short and simple, that I've ever uh, read. Well, when but, I was yeah, eight and a half, wasn't a theological definition, it was science. Right. Well, when I died at eight and a half, and Jesus had met me at the gates of heaven, and He brought me in and showed me. I said, where am I? You're the eternal now where there is no past, present, and future. Everything always is. There's an isness to everything. The past, present, and future. God is omniscient to everything. And that's why what people understand is literally when you pray even for people in the past, when you pray for our time and our future, our nation, you change reality. You change what's going to happen next. We can pray for the peace of of Israel and for repentance. We can pray for God to intervene. We can pray for a war not to start, just like the people of Nineveh. Is America going to be like the Ninevites and pray and there will be a generation or more before there's destruction? Is America going to repent of abortions of 55 million American babies and millions around the world when the very first thing that our current usurper-in-chief did was to take off the Mexico Protocol, which prevented funding by people like me, or a pro-life Christian, a messianic Christian that don't want our money to pay for abortions in Kenya and other countries around the world, or population control policy. Uh, no, this is this is something else. What we have right now is we need to be Joshua Christians. We need to stand up and we need to be believers. We need to not be passive anymore. We need to take our scepter and we need to rule. As sons and daughters of the Most High, we need to be constantly face down in prayer and saying, God, now that you put us in this challenge, we're going to deposit our love for you, and you're going to inspire us, you're going to give us gifts of knowledge, you're going to help us out of prep, not only physically prep, but spiritually prep and help to witness to other people, because we're there. A lot of people are not, you know, well, they you say know, it's not the uh, end of the world. This isn't going to be the end of the world for a lot of the population of Earth. A lot of the people on Earth... In the next decade or so, when if this starts winding down, they're not going to be here. They're going to die. I know. Uh, Look, three months ago, uh, roughly, at early May, we came very close to to war. And uh, that's when Israel popped its first, uh, probably its first tactical nuke uh, in Syria at nighttime. But it passed over our heads. And uh, this could pass over our heads, this this, uh, looming war. Now, will it or not? I don't know. But I, I encourage well, people to pray. Get close to God. Yeah. God right. is I think also, Lucifer is a fallen fool. He's right. a pathetic jerk. You know, God. We'll be back in just a on the break that U.S. readies intelligence legal justification for possible military strike <laughs> against Syria. And of course, this is the Washington Post. It's a, it's a rag in Washington. The Obama administration has tried to bolster its case Tuesday for possible military action within days with intelligence agencies preparing to release intercepted communications. How the heck did they get them? Just like Hello. Echelon in Europe, they're, they're going to they're going to jam up these communications. If It's like me saying, I have a wonderful, stable family, so it's a really good idea that I kill my son or daughter. For no logical reason, other than the fact that I want to have a police SWAT team come up here and SWAT me and kill me on the spot because I'm going to come out armed. I mean, how stupid is that? 
Syria did not do this. And I had, had a big argument no, last it, week. It, 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 when it, I had it, on, it, on the program Bill Salas, who's otherwise good, but he made this stupid statement that, oh, yeah, they got pretty well proof. There's no proof. Look at the United Nations inspectors now, and they're going to find that these, uh, the these, these gas weapons were given the to the, the al Nusra Al Qaeda in Jordan by America and NATO. They gave these weapons and training to their to our mortal enemies from Afghanistan and Iraq, and now they're in there killing Syrian citizens as a justification for an air attack well, by the, cruise the missiles or bombing. Inspectors, the UN inspectors have been told that they are not to try to judge where the chemical attack come, came from. They can only say were chemicals used, yes or no. Yeah, but then they're going to try to say that the Syrian rebels don't have them when I have my own reports and sources that say we trained well, them in Jordan well, yeah, and okay, gave them well, to well, gave them Use weapons. logic. Forget what anybody and everybody else says. Use logic. Right. Uh, uh, Assad has been winning and is getting close to literally kicking them out of his country. And, and they've been paying a, a fortune, up to 100000 for each one of these yahoos to come in with his AK-47 and rape and pillage and kill. And yet the, the Assad uh, armed forces, the Syrian army, and with support of the people, have been literally slaughtering these terrorists. Okay. Right. Why would he do this? And why would he do it uh, within a, a, a maybe two or three days of the U.N. inspection team being there? It makes no sense. It's not logical. And if one thing that the Syrians have done is they've been proving themselves to be pretty logical and pretty tough. Mm -hmm. So it, it really makes no sense at all. There was no military advantage for the Syrians to do this and every <clears throat> disadvantage. And that right. kind of a and they, by the way, they were caught because flag. Th there was a it was a briefing report. Listen to this, found in Europe, the day before the so-called attack. Oh, yeah. It was already yeah. ready to be released in the media about yeah. this attack. A day yeah. before it actually happened. That's yeah. like the that's like building seven falling on the camera. They're saying, yeah, we're going to report building seven falling, and the camera's going through the back of the window. And building seven is still standing, and they're trying to report. BBC News did this before nine yeah, eleven. I know. And 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 the building seven was still standing when they're reporting that it had fallen. Well, it's it's uh, hard to get all your lies straight when you're a big liar, you know. Right. And and that's the problem. I've got a list of of, of stories that I posted today, and I couldn't get. Oh yeah, yeah. let's go through that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I it probably should. Uh, Western warplanes begin arriving in Cyprus. Now, the British have a sovereign base. That means they actually, it's British soil uh, in southern Cyprus. And it's about 100 miles offshore from Syria. And there it's a Navy, an Army, an Air Force base. And the Royal Air Force, they've been flying in planes and, and uh, transport planes with military hardware round the clock. Okay, next story. Uh, U.S. Secretary of Defense says U.S. ready to launch war on Syria. Uh, the man needs a brain. If anybody would like to donate one, uh, he, he desperately needs one. West and Arab leaders reach consensus on Syrian strike. Well, the Gulf cooperative states who've been, who are basically puppets of, of uh, the, the global banking cartel, yes, they're in, they've reached agreement with... <laughs> Uh, United States, France, and Britain. They agreed, they agreed to support the petrodollar. That's all this is over. Yeah, exactly. People don't understand. This is the this is a battle over the petrodollar and Iran well, Syria and Syria and, Iran and, and northern Iraq's rise to power program. with the yeah. It's the petrodollar and, and, attack. And is what one it is. of the reasons they killed President Kennedy is he wanted to end the Federal Reserve. Look, uh, this is about the global banking cartel and th their domination of the planet Earth and all people. By the way, Americans would rather get a root canal uh, or have a col colostomy than launch a war against Syria. And it's something like 9% of Americans right now support a war against Syria. Uh, State Department indefinitely postpones a meeting with Russia on a political solution to the Syrian crisis. Uh, tomorrow, uh, in The Hague, we were supposed to meet with Russia uh, to find a political solution, but the U.S. Does England to postpone them once the Ameri when the American uh, naval ships that have cruise missiles on them, with thousands of naval officers and junior officers, die and go to the bottom of the Persian Gulf? Do they want to? Well, I, I wrote that? an article yesterday about uh, Obama is uh, is Obama going to sacrifice four U.S. destroyers? 
The right. Brit and plus ourselves, we have a number of submarines that can launch cruise missiles in their position. And, of course, we can launch our cruise missiles from aircraft. But we've got four surface ships. And, by the way, all of our super carriers and assault carriers are way in the hell out of the eastern Met. They're nowhere near. But we've got these four destroyers out there, and they are in harm's way. And there's a lot of American men, women, uh, because we now have a lot of women in our Navy. There are a lot of men and, and women on board those four ships, and they're good people, and their their very lives are at stake. Uh, because if we launch against Syria, Syria's going to launch back at them. And if they use the Sunburn or the Onyx or the Islander missiles or the, the underwater rocket that flies 220 miles an hour underwater, uh, we don't have a defense against that kind of technology. That's why our super carriers aren't there. And those poor kids are going to go to the bottom of the sea. And that's just wrong. You need to contact your congressman who is a pinhead. And tell the congressmen and senators that they're going to lose their seat and you're going to actually recall them. If they start this punitive war, the first thing that's going to happen is that it'll be an insurance carrier, Lloyd's of London, who close the Strait of Hormuz. We will go into a full force cardiac arrest world economy. We will see terrorism on a scale. And this, won't, by the way, won't just be controlled by CIA or by various Western agencies like they did with the Center of Boys. This will be. Out of control terrorism, counter responses against American citizens anywhere in the world that will make it absolutely stupid to be anywhere in the world and call yourself an American. Well, that's that may well be. That's all of this is so stupid. It's and it's so unnecessary. Well, they don't. They want it. They want to have American blood. Depression, for God's sakes, we spent trillions of dollars fighting with three. In all these horrible places like Afghanistan, and what has it got us? I'm talking about us, we well, Americans. Yeah. You, you mentioned but poor t- and broke and dead in many cases. Or good example, you have an article, war. Tim. As Tony Blair says, you guys in UK should intervene. You posted Tony the article. Tony Blair tells is one. Of, I, I've dealt with a lot of crooks in the United Kingdom. You know, I've got the, the, the I'm Earl Sterling and all that, and I've dealt with a lot of people in the cabinet, uh, all the political parties. I've known a lot of them, and and Tony. Blair is one of the scummiest human beings on the face of this earth. So don't even get me going on Tony Blair or his wife. She well, you might need an extra lawyer. hour just to talk about Tony. Yeah, he's well, on. He, you know, he's not. He's not worth the air. I mean, he really isn't. Uh, U.S. gathers uh, warplanes and military hardware in Cyprus. Uh, the Icelander SS-26 missile. God have mercy on those poor guys, because it is. So, so we have no, and I want to repeat this, so over you out there can check with naval experts. We have them locally here in San Diego. There is no, 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 that's the word of prophecy. Thus saith the Lord, no asymmetric defense for our sitting Navy against these Russian weapons. If they try to start a war and the Syrians use these weapons, our Navy is going bye-bye. Well, that's why we—that's why our carriers aren't there, and our carriers are surrounded by, by four to five uh, guided missile destroyers and cruisers. Do you think yeah. the Phalanx the missile anti-missile system can stop it? I know they can't. Do you no. think that a super cavitation torpedo can be stopped, which literally flies through the water at, at what through four hundred knots? No. 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 There's no way. What's going to happen is we're going to see that the whole. You want to, it'll be like the Spanish Armada showing up with giant ships that move slowly, don't have the range. Their cannonballs are six times more of the throw weight than the British, but doesn't have half the range. They get downwind, and the British cut them to pieces and let them sink. And the few ships yep. remaining limp off to Ireland. Yeah. <clears throat> well, guys, uh, now's a good time to pray. If you aren't used to praying, get used to it. God's real. God loves us all. And, right, and uh, he counts every hair on your head. He's there for us. Now, he's there not just for Tim Alexander, it's for everyone. The little girl of Palestine. <laughs> you better believe it. Yep.